now it's time to visit the Anglesey Circuit for one of our famous fifth gear shootouts. The mission is simple. Put two like-minded cars together to discover which is quickest. Today it's these two supercar drop tops that take quick turning to a new dimension. This is Porsche's most expensive 911, the Turbo S Cabriolet. It can get to 62 in a shade over 3 seconds and tops out at 198 miles per hour. While this is Aston Martin's most expensive Vantage, the V12 S Roadster. It's a touch slower off the mark, but for those brave enough, it will exceed 200 miles per hour. Two cars with impressive stats, but which will be fastest around the track? I'll start with the Porsche. Behind me is a 3.8 litre flat six twin turbo engine, which Porsche has managed to squeeze 552 brake horsepower out of. Bonkers. Helping put all that power down is a four wheel drive system and a seven speed super slick dual clutch gearbox to make sure I stay slap bang in the middle of the talker. Normally, a 911 is a bargain supercar, but this particular model is close to Ferrari 458 money. You do get some toys, though, for your cash. You get four-wheel steering, active roll control, and dynamic engine mounts, which harden up the faster you go, so it stops the engine from slopping about in the engine bay, which will affect the handling. These soften up to soak up vibrations, though, when you slow down. There's no doubt that this is a well-engineered car, but it's not all electronic driven. There is room for a driver to really feel what's going on. Turn, 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 turn. Oh, freaking heck. Okay, time for a quick one. There's a fine line that you need to tread to just feed that power in and then rein it back again when you need to on the power all the way out, now onto the brakes. The brakes feel fantastic, really sensing when this car is at its grip limit, so my senses are alert to it, more alert perhaps than in most other cars, because it has got a big heavy rear end that will swing around and bite me. This tricky long hairpin, a little bit too keen there. And we're coming up to the finishing line now. Oh, keep on the circuit. Flat out to the line. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. The Porsche crosses the line in one minute, 27.09 seconds. Now to the Vantage. Unlike Porsche, which has more track-focused machines than the Cabrio I've just driven, this is Aston Martin's most performance-oriented model. In fact, oh, in fact, this soft top and hard top Vantage S are the fastest regular production cars the company has ever made. This car's got a little bit more power than the 911. It's got 565 brake horsepower, and that's provided by a normally aspirated engine that's 2.1 litres bigger than the Porsche's, and it's got twice as many cylinders. And this car is definitely more rear-end happy than the 911. manual and compared to Porsche's PDK unit it is positively stone age it jerks on the way down the box and sort of grabs at the gears on the way up it is not a smooth operator at all it is functional though it does the job yes the Aston feels a bit like an analog car in a digital age but it's still fast shall we see how fast let's go into the first corner, turn in. Off we go to third gear, feed in the power, unwind the lock, find a straight line, go, go, go. Onto the brakes, down into second. At the halfway point, the Aston trails the Porsche by just a tenth of a second. Hit one apex, hit the other apex. Keep it nice and tidy. 
Uh, coming up to cross the line, here we go. Oh, stop the clock. And by the finish line, the 9-11's lead has extended slightly to just under a quarter of a second. The old world Aston has serious grunt, but it's not the soft top to possess if point-to-point -point time is your main priority. It's the brand new Nissan 350Z, which the Japanese manufacturers hope will revive their reputation in the two-seater sports car market